Hey what's going on guys, Crazy here, welcome back to some more Biomutant tips and tricks and today let's take a look at the best early unlocks that you absolutely need for your character. There's a few things that I was aiming with this video guide, first of all to make combat that much more interesting, second of all to make exploration much easier and fun and the third of all to get access to pretty much any hidden area in the game be it behind a hidden wall or a hidden door. So let's jump right into it. By the way today's video has been brought to you thanks to instant gaming so Instant Gaming sells games at some of the cheapest prices you can find around and if you use my links in the description box down below you can even get Biomutant 35% cheaper and I believe that this mostly works in Europe but I believe it also works in some other regions so either log in from Europe or maybe use a VPN to bypass the restrictions and get it at a much cheaper price again all links down below. Let's get started with a few really awesome active abilities that will be super useful both in combat as well as exploration and for just a couple of side points you can unlock the blaze power very early on in the game this can be used both in an offensive kind of way as you leave a trail of blazing fire behind you to set targets and enemies on fire but what I like using this for is to more easily and faster traverse the environment this is especially useful on characters with high intellect as it's gonna give you a lot more key so you can blast this ability a lot more often and cover a lot more terrain. It also works by the way when you're up in the air so if you want to cover even higher distances or jump over a very big ledge this will help you a ton with that. The next one is in the biogenetics category now this will cost about 8 points but the storm hop right here is an amazing tie-in especially with the air melee combos. So at the end of these combos which I covered in a previous video you can finish it up with a storm hop to deal even more damage as the target hits the ground and then even launch the other other targets around you up into the air so that you can continue the combo and deal even more damage to other targets. On top of that you also leave a dot onto them so it's overall a super useful one to have. On the same notes I would also suggest taking a look at your Wung Fu categories and specifically whatever type of weapon you're using right now and specifically the two extra unlocks that you can get right there at the bottom. For example if you're playing a dual wield character go ahead and definitely unlock the unstoppable pig and the unknowable force both of these are special ultimate attacks that deal way higher damage but they also charge up your super wang fu that as i've said in the previous video is going to be super awesome in the early stages for extra types of attacks Coming in to number 2, very early on in the game you might encounter this very peculiar big panda with a what seems to be a lantern into one of its hands. Definitely go ahead and get close to it and interact with it because this is going to open up a new side quest called the Mirage every single time you encounter this character. Every single time you finish these quests which are super short you're gonna be given the option to choose a different upgrade from possible 4 maximum upgrades for your automaton. Now, the the first one that I definitely recommend right off the bat is going to be your glider as it is way more useful than any of the other upgrades for your automaton like even compared to the healing mechanic it's gonna be way better than that and from that point on you can pretty much unlock them in whatever sequence you want to but the glider is definitely the most important of them all right here as it's gonna help you traversing and exploring the environments. Moving on to number 3, there is a level 2 upgrade to your claw bar, which is what you use to unlock the locked doors in the game, though very early on you will notice that many of these doors, especially the higher end ones, will require a level 2 upgrade, which is the maximum you can get for the claw bar. It took me a while to find out how you can upgrade this, but it's actually done through a really short quest chain for a character called Pebble. So you can actually find this quite early on in the game, especially after defeating the first world eater and you can find them right here a little bit to the east of the dead zone right next to its entrance. When you reach this point you're going to notice that there's this small little canyon at the end of which you will encounter Pebble and he is going to start that quest chain for you. Now these quests are not too long you only take about 20 minutes to fully complete them you just have to scout a couple of areas and make them safe for Pebble but once you're back he is going to fully upgrade that claw bar to level 2 for you case in which you're going to be able 
able to use it without any restriction on any door that requires a claw bar. On the same note, there is a second tool that you will unlock early on and that is gonna be your clonk fist. In this situation, this can also be used as a regular melee weapon and it comes with its own unique types of attacks, but mostly you will use it to break down these derelict walls in many of the locations on the map. Now, unfortunately, you will also need a level to upgrade for it, especially for some of the tougher walls that you will soon enough encounter. Again, just like in the case of the first one, this is done through a series of side quests, this time around for a different character called Click. You can find him on this side of the map right here, also pretty close to the dead zone, so he's gonna be located a little bit to the southeast of the previous character. Once you go there, start the quest chain for him, the first one is going to be right here at this power plant, and you're gonna have to capture a few lightning strikes and then go back to the character. Once you go back with the first quest, he is going to immediately take in your clonk fist, upgrade that to level 2, from which point you can pretty much knock down any derelict wall or any type of wall that appears to be breakable in the full game without any restriction. Moving on next, very early on in the game you're gonna be given the mission called the Open World and this can spawn relatively in this area though its specific spawn point might be a bit different for you but this will unlock a permanent mount very early on in the game and will make traversal a lot easier. So the way mount unlocks work in this game is that once you find one of these creatures simply look around for one of these big brown bushes beneath which you will encounter one of these pip plants as they are called. Called. Now these pip plants will be different for each of the species in the game but once you find one you can bring it to one of these creatures and use it to tame it and unlock it as a permanent mount. And there's dozens of these creatures all around the map that you can tame in similar fashion. Once you find one of these groups go ahead look around for a little bit until you find these pip plants and unlock any cool creature you might lay your eyes upon. You can by the way also get exclusive ones from outposts like for example this one right here that is really awesome. I don't believe you can find this in the wild, but you can get it from one of the capital outposts from one of the main tribes. Moving on to number 6, let's talk about the hazard suits, of which there are about a handful in total in the game for each of the types of environmental hazards that you will encounter. You will definitely need these, these will all be of ultimate quality by the way, and they usually also come in with some really awesome bonus stats. So what you need to know is this, when you encounter a new hazard zone, your character will react to it. For example, in a biohazard zone they will start vomiting, in a cold zone they will start shivering and so on and so on so forth. And once that happens, you will notice that there is a new side quest pop-up on your screen. Definitely go ahead and follow these, like for example, the radioactive suit can be acquired from a starting quest very early on in the game on this side of the map. It's one of the early zones that you can easily reach to. And you basically have to go to one of these satellite dish locations every single time to pinpoint the location of the suit, which is going to be quite nearby. Once you're in the main area with the suit, you just have to enter whatever facility or underground area there is and grab it from one of these drawers. And once you do that, pretty much bam, you have that right there in your inventory. And by the way, you can even set up different outfits for different types of occasions. So I have my main outfit for damage in the first one, but the remaining four slots are all with different biohazard suits or radioactive suits for different types of zones that I usually go into. And this again will be done for every single type of suit in the game. And finally, this brings us to the seventh point on the list, which is going to be the level 2 engine upgrade for your Goo Glide, which you will actually need if you want to traverse the green waters, otherwise you simply cannot pass them. So you can actually get the jet ski or the Goo Glide very early on from one of the first gulp mission right here on this side of the map, but it only gives you the jet ski with a level 1 engine. To get the level 2, you actually have to follow the Goo Glide strong boxes quest chain and follow up with the second box right here on this side of the map. So it's going to be slightly to the east of the starting area into one of these water zones on one of these smaller islands. You might even encounter an enemy outpost over there and have to take down a bunch of enemies before you can interact with the box but it's going to be super useful because from this point on you can pretty much access any water area in the game be it green or not and even access some of the high inaccessible areas that might give you some really awesome 
loot. So more on that in a future video about really awesome early legendary unlocks, but these ones right here that I've talked about will ensure that you will get access to those cool items that I will talk about in future videos. This is it for now, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.